So for this section, we're still using ratios, except now we're, our images are a little harder to read. They're kind of intertwined. So we want to calculate the area of triangle L, M, N. So this big triangle. So, what, oops, what is the area of a triangle formula? Remember, you take one half, oops, times base times height. So the base, the B, is the bottom, it's the part you're sitting on, and then the height comes from the top all the way down. So over here, that's this length, right? So let's label what we know and see if we can figure out what the height's going to be for the area. So QP is 21, so that's this. So I'm going to redraw the small triangle so we can kind of separate out. We have 21, M to N is 32, so that's our base of our big triangle. All right, so in our formula, we have 1 half times 32 times the height, so we need to find the height. SR is 12, so this little section, we have half the height is 12. So we need to figure out the rest of the height right here, okay? So I'm gonna call this X. And then that's this part is x. So when we write our ratios, we're gonna use the height to side ratios. Those actually match as well as side to side like we did in our last ones. So let's look. Let's look at our small triangle. Our height is x and our side is 21. And on our other triangle, our height is x plus 12. It's that whole side. And then our side is 32. So now we're going to cross multiply like we did before. So x times 32 is 32x. And then I have 21 times x plus 12. So I have to make sure that I'm multiplying the 21 by both of those terms. So I'm going to distribute. I'm going to have 21x and then 21 times 12 is a big number, is 252. And we're gonna just keep solving. So minus 21x on both sides, because I'm trying to get x by itself, that's my goal. So that leaves me with 11x equals 252. And then we're gonna divide both sides by 11. So 252 divided by 11 is 22.91. And that's x, that's right here, 22.91. So now I'm gonna erase this. The whole height of this triangle is 22.91 plus 12. So 34.91, and that is H. So now my area is 1 half times 32 times 34.91. So let's see what we get. 1 half times 32 times 34.91. So 558.56 is our rounding, but high five. Close enough, okay? Sometimes it might be off one or two decimals at the very end. Let's look at another one. Given the following information, calculate the length of RW. So we want this whole side right here. And we're assuming the RZX and RST are similar. That's gonna help us write our ratios. So let's label what we have. We have RZ is 21, RY is 27, RX is 42, Z to Y is 9, 
and then these tick marks mean equal, so if that's 9, that's 9. SW is 18, same thing, those three tick marks, those three tick marks. So we are trying to find the length of the whole thing from R to W, but we only know half of it. So we need to look at some triangles. So I'm going to redraw some of them. So I have this triangle where I know all three sides, 27, 9, and 21. And then I also know I'm going to redraw this triangle now, the one that's kind of part of it. So I know that this side is 21, this side's 27, we need to know this side x, and we know the base is 18. So when we use our ratios, we're going to use the bottom, because we know those numbers. We know 9 goes with 18. And then we're going to use these sides. So we know 27, and then we need to use 27 plus x for that side. So our ratios are set up. Now we're going to cross multiply to solve for x. So I have 18 times 27 equals 9 times both 27 and x. So I wrote it in parentheses so I remember to distribute. So 18 times 27 is 486. 9 times 27 is 243 plus 9x. Now we need to get x by itself, right? So I'm going to subtract 243 from both sides. Over here I'm left with 9x. And then here I have 3, 4, 2, 243 again. And then divide both sides by 9 to get just x. So 243 divided by 9 is 27. So this little side is 27 as well. So I, if I want to find the whole thing, I'm going to take 27 plus 27, which is... 4, um, 54. So remember, sometimes it helps to draw out the triangles so you can see where everything's going and what you're using. So given the following information, we want to calculate perimeter. So perimeter means add up all the side lengths. We want to find the perimeter of R, S, T. So that's the whole big triangle. Let's see what we're given here. R to Z is 18. R to Y is 27. R to X is 33. Z to Y is 9. And S to W is 21. So again, those are the same, those are the same. So I want to find the, the perimeter, so that means I need to know every side length. So I know the bottom is 21 plus 21, which is 42, but on the sides I only know a half. So we need to figure out what this length is and what this length is. And we're going to use these little triangles like we did last time. So let's use that little triangle where we know 27, 33, and 9. And then we're going to compare it to the big triangle. Because we know the bottom's 21. But we need 33 plus some unknown. So let's do 33 plus x. And now we're going to line up our sides. So we need the 9 and the 21. We're actually not going to use the 27 because we don't know the side length. And then 33 goes with 33 plus x. And we're going to cross multiply these. So 21 times 33 equals 9 times 33 plus x. 
with you. So six ninety three equals nine times thirty three two ninety seven plus nine x. So let's subtract the two ninety seven from both sides. We'll be left with nine x. So six ninety three. Minus 297 is 396. And then last step, divide by 9 to get x by itself. So 396 divided by 9 is 44. Okay, so we just found this side is 44. So on our big triangle, we will take 33 plus 44. This side 77. So we're almost there. Now we need to know this side. And we're gonna do exactly what we just did. We're gonna take the small triangle. So I'm gonna just erase these for space purposes. <laughs> this side is 18, 27, nine. And we're gonna compare it to this big triangle where we know we're trying to find this now. So we're going to take 18 plus x on this side and then the 21. We don't need to know this other side because we're going to use this. 9 over 21 equals 18 to 18 plus x. And then we're going to cross multiply. I'm going to go pretty quick just because we've done this before. 21 to 18, 9 to 18 plus x, and then, let's see, 21 to 18 is, I just have that number, 378, 9 times 18 is 162 plus 9x, oops, moved our Minus 162, minus 162, that leaves us with 9x equals 6, 1, 2, 16. Divide by 9, is 24. So this is 24. When I add them together, I get 18 plus 24 is 42. So this whole side is 42 as well. So perimeter, remember, means add them all up. Let's add up all the sides. There we go. I wrote it up here. So our sides are 42 and 42 and 77. 161. took a while. Let's see what our next one looks like. If QR is 55 and MN is 25 and the height of MLMN is 20, calculate the value of H. Oh, so this is just similar triangles. So we're going to line up our sides. So 55 goes with 25. H goes to 20. Simple. Cross multiply. So 55 times 20. 25 times H. 1100. Divide both sides by 25. Type in that answer. So JK equals 30. Find AC. So there's a lot going on in this picture. These lines mean that they're all parallel, and these mean that all of these are equal. 
So this line is equally cut four times. So what I have is I have a little triangle. I have a little bit bigger triangle. I don't know why I put a one in there. And then I have a little bit bigger triangle. And then a little bit bigger triangle, the biggest. So because of these equal side lengths and the parallel lines, this little one is one-fourth the size of the big one. This one would be two-fourths and three-fourths. And this one would be the full triangle, we would say four over four or just one. All right, so if I want to find, if I know this is 30, and this I don't know, I would take 30 divided by 3 fourths. Let me show you why. So 30 equals 3 fourths of this side. So in order to solve for x, the time scene, I would divide by 3 fourths. And 30 divided by 3 fourths is 4. Okay, this is our last one, so hang in there. QR is 66, MN is 36, and the perimeter of this one, PQR, is 242. And we're trying to find the perimeter of this one. So, I don't know if you read this in your reading, but a side ratio equals a perimeter ratio. They're the same. So if I have a side ratio of 66 to 36, that's the same number as the perimeter ratio, 242 to x. And I can solve it just like we've been solving our other ones by cross multiplying. So 36 times 242 equals 66x. So I'm going to take 36 times 242 and then divide it by 66 to get our answer. So 36 times 242 and divide that answer by 66. So x is 132 and x was our perimeter.